Green Vicks, Black Sheep, Larry Lamb. And their team captain, David Mitchell. And facing them tonight, good at sums, Carol Borderman. He's a hit with mums, Russell Howard. And their team captain, Lee Mack. And your host, Rob Bryden. Good evening and welcome to Would I Lie to You, the show that demands each of our panellists lie through their teeth. Now, one in three adults have lied about reading highbrow literature to appear well-read. But, I mean, when you've read as much Dickens as I have, you realise that's typical of what muggles do. <laughs> and psychologists claim that laughing at a joke you don't find funny is a form of lying. So, if you're in the audience tonight, uh, prepare for an evening of raucous dishonesty. <laughs> And so to round one, Home Truths, in which our panellists turn over a card and read aloud a fact about themselves. Some are true, others are lies that they've never seen before. Can the opposing team separate the truth from the fiction? Uh, Garrel Vorderman, you're oh, first okay. up. Please reveal all. On Countdown, if I worked out the number puzzle before the time was up, <laughs> I used to play a little game. That's where I've seen you before. <laughs> <laughs> So, David's team, what, what do you think? What, what, what little game? Um, well, on the numbers puzzle, you know, you used to do this and press the target yeah. and the number and the target. And then there's a time up. limit. And then there'd be 30, you had 30 seconds to do something. Yeah. Well, most of the time, I'd get the answer before the clock started. So I had 30 <laughs> seconds. Before the clock started? <laughs> So you must have despised the contestants. <laughs> Sitting there working away for the whole 30 seconds like morons. <laughs> what I used to do, I used to get my pen that I would write on the board with and I used to go round all the props boys and I used to make them tap the end of my pen and how many could tap the end of my pen in 30 seconds was the game. <laughs> So, how many props guys, props guys, yeah. were required in the production of Countdown? <laughs> well, Joe's been on Countdown a lot, so you know how it, we have uh, someone like Harry or Vince or Stan who do the water Carol, pouring. Carol, 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 and Carol, then Carol, Carol, we had. Oh, yeah, had. <laughs> Did you ever vary the game at all? Was it always the same game? Sometimes. Sometimes, here sometimes we go. Sometimes I managed to get to the front row of the audience as well. You Occasionally, did, did you? Oh, of the come audience. On. Those people can't move. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> did, did, you actually, did you actually think oh, this game up? She's gone. I'll get her next time. <laughs> Was this not distracting to the poor contestants who are trying to do some maths in out of shot? Uh, slightly out of shot, yes. Yeah. I feel sorry for this, uh, this new girl that's doing the, doing the numbers, cos all the props guy must be going, oh, you'll have great fun on this show. <laughs> they would have said to her on the first day, are we going to play Touch the Pen? <laughs> and got fired for sexual harassment. <laughs> We always played touch the pen with Karen. Well, I'm sorry. I'm just not like that. <laughs> David, what are your, you and your teammates thinking? Is it strike you as plausible? I think Larry? it's flannel myself. <laughs> flannel? That's flannel. a great word. Flannel. You've been yeah. on EastEnders too long, yeah. Larry. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I mean, I missed a lot of that because as soon as Cal started describing the game, I had a sort of mental absence. <laughs> <laughs> I've done Dictionary Corner quite a lot. And but I you was... couldn't see me from Dictionary Corner, could you? No, I yeah. couldn't. Yeah. Well, what I doubt is whether you would be allowed, when the contestants are trying to work out the math, to run around the studio getting men to touch your marker pen. <laughs> Yes, well, so we think it's a lie, I think. I yeah, think we do. Yeah. OK, what a surprise. Yeah. OK, Carol, is it truth or is it a lie? It is... <laughs> true. Oh. <laughs> now then. Oh! <laughs> and do you know what? It actually is lots of fun. <laughs> You seriously did this? It was a ritual, and after about 15 years, it gets funny, really, when, you know... Wow, that is, that's, that's what we're hoping with this show. <laughs> but, 
Like, do you know when I was being really cheeky? I'd take the top off and then they all got dirty fingers. <laughs> <laughs> I think you just like to behave outside of society's rules, don't you? <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised to find out you're an enthusiastic dogger. <laughs> so, Larry, your turn to confess all. <laughs> I used to run a market stall... Yeah. ..that only sold hats for dogs. Please, <laughs> <laughs> team, this shouldn't take long. <laughs> What, uh, what year was this? It was in 19... There we go. 19... Larry, we're supposed to go. Here yeah, we go. Yeah, Not, yeah. You don't do it about yourself. No, it was in the 1960s. The 1960s? Yeah. Yeah. And this was your own business? I was a was lad. It? I was still at school. You were still at school? <laughs> and you thought, I'm going to hit up the booming dog hat market. Yeah. <laughs> I was pretty enterprising lad, I tell you. Can you give me some... In give Harlow. Some... What was Harlow. your top seller? Harlow. 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 The top seller was, was a plaid one, funnily enough. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to ask about sizes, cos obviously the sizes of dogs... There were only three sizes. <laughs> what were they? They were, well, <laughs> small, small, <laughs> medium and large. <laughs> <laughs> It's a complex system, Carol. Yeah. Yeah. My key question is, how did a dog keep the hat on? Um, you put it over its ears. So you crushed its ears? No, you don't crush it. No, well, I mean, this was the 60s. You didn't worry about those things anyway. Hang on, hang on, Larry, Larry, Larry. People talk about the 60s here. In yeah. the 60s, it was wild, crazy. I've never heard anyone. It was crazy. We used to crush dogs' ears and we'd think of them monkeys. <laughs> Honestly, crazy time. Did you make the hats yourself or did you buy them from somebody else and then sell them on? No, they were being made in China. They were being made in China. So you had links with China, <laughs> yeah. despite the fact you were at school. You're chasing this life. Was it just dog hats? Doing? Yeah. The main item then in the 60s, for some strange reason, in Harlow... <laughs> <was> <laughs> The moment has now come within the game yeah. where you guess whether it's the truth you know or what, a lie. All the evidence seems to suggest <laughs> it is a great big fat porky. Yes. <gasps> That'd be a good day for one of his hats. <laughs> <laughs> so you're saying it's a lie? It's got to be a lie. Isn't lie. It? It's a lie. OK. Larry, is it the truth or is it a lie? It's a lie. Yeah. Yeah. A lie that uh, Larry did not run a market stall that only sold hats for dogs. He was far too busy running a kiosk selling cummerbunds to kittens. <laughs> Russell, your turn to convince us. Right. Um, I used to put my underpants on my head to cure my acne. <laughs> <laughs> sounds sounds reasonable enough. Um, save it. Were they on your head like a hat, or were they just covering your face? I, no, I only did it at night. I didn't... I... Well, you slept? Yeah. With, a, like, an underpants mask? Yeah, I'm ashamed to say... Were, were these the underpants you'd been wearing the no, previous no, day? No, no, I'm not a weirdo. I, um, <laughs> I had a system. I tried to... I was, I was 12, and I really, you know, I was into Nirvana and stuff like that. I didn't want to cut my hair, greasy hair. So I thought, hang on. I can't ask mum for like a hairnet, so I'll just whack some <laughs> pants on like that. Nice and tight, and then I'll sleep and I'll wake up and it'll be fine. If the pants were tight around your head, yeah. they must have been pretty tight when you wore them as pants. <laughs> that's, that's just yeah. what I was thinking. I think, I think that's a bit of a I clue. Got, my I mean, waist one is, is, is wider than my <laughs> cranium. David, you can't see Daddy. He's all small and withered. <laughs> He's saying he tapers to a point. <laughs> yeah, he's like... And what made you stop? What happened? Um, I went to the doctors because one of my nipples suddenly went whoosh, like that and grew, didn't make, make that, that noise. noise. Yeah, yeah. That <laughs> no. um, and I went there and I was worried I was becoming a woman or something like that. And my mum chose this moment to go, yeah, and he puts pants on his head at night. <laughs> and, and I was suddenly going, we weren't going to chat about that. And the doctor said, in no way will that get rid of your, uh, your acne. So I stopped doing it. You had acne uh, at 12? Yeah. 12? Yeah. Acne yeah. and you started to get breasts. Yeah. <laughs> It was a brutal summer. Brutal. <laughs> so if I'd have had breasts at 12, I'd never have left the house. Only what? <laughs> <laughs> so, David's team. Well, I, I, think, I think it's plausible, because I've worn pants on my head as well. Have you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> In what context did you wear pants on your head? Well, I think 
possibly when I, I was like looking for something to tie my hair back with. Actually, Joe, what's that in your hair at the moment? Is that? <laughs> Obviously, if I had pants on my head at the moment, they'd be the size of a marquee. <laughs> what I like to do every night when I take my pants off, it's, 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 a, it's a bit of a laugh. As I, as I, I disrobed, all I've got left now, if you can Disrobe. picture it, is, is the pants. And what I do is I, I shimmy them down, the length of my legs, first the th upper thigh, yeah. then they... <laughs> They cross past the knee, roll it down, yeah. down the shin. I take, I extract the left Come on, foot. Rob, we're only human. <laughs> and then I go boom, and I catch him on my head. <laughs> so, David, yeah. what's it going to be? Well, I, do you think yeah? Well, uh, yes. We, I think we're going to say we think it's true. You're saying it. You're saying it's we're true. Saying he it's actually true. did it. Okay, Russell. Is it fact or fiction? It, depressingly, it is true. <laughs> <laughs> Our next round is called The Ring of Truth. I'll read out some celebrity facts, and all our team need to do is decide whether they're truth or tosh. Take a look at this fascinating clip of rock and roll star Liam Gallagher. People were scared to talk about what it actually is that makes a rock star. An example of this is Liam Gallagher, who at various points looked quite androgynous. What does that mean? You have a feminine quality about you as well. I have a what? Feminine quality about you. What does that mean? Well, you're not just some, you know... I'm a bird. No, I'm not saying you're a bird. What does that mean? Well, it's like you're not, you know, some 15 stone hole. What? You, know, you, have, you have that kind of androgynous. It's a kind of... You've got, you've got a bit of feminine in your masculinity. Have I? Explain. How does that mean? I'm a pretty boy, yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty good looking. I take care of my hair. They're obsessed with my hair. You've got, to, you've got to have a decent haircut if you're the front man of a band, you know what I mean? Liam Gallagher there, talking a lot of sense. <laughs> he, he is talking. I think that makes complete sense. He's, I mean, that's the clincher. You've got, you've got to have a, you know, a bit of a... Poncy haircut if you're going to be the front man of a pop band. Even I know that. But that's not... It wasn't Even that's I know, if I wanted to be the front man of a pop band, this would not do. <laughs> <laughs> Robert, might I ask you, with your number one hit single earlier in the year, uh, did you do anything special with your hair? I just try and hang on to it, basically. <laughs> <laughs> Eating a hasty retreat. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you for mentioning the single, oh, Carol. Bless pleasure. you. Bless you. Doesn't alter the fact that Countdown is over. Um... <laughs> Here is the related fact for Lee's team. Liam Gallagher once ordered a trampoline from hotel room service, claiming, I like to bounce. <laughs> uh, do you believe it, Lee's team? Trampoline. Ooh. I love the idea that it's true. Now, I think trampoline is a good thing, because bed bouncing is a good thing to do, is it not? Yes, yes. Jumping. Mm. Up and down. <laughs> so, I'd say it was and... morally... I think it's morally neutral, yes. I'd say, bouncing up and down. It's not like recycling is a good thing to do. You know, it's fine if you want to bounce, but don't feel guilty if you're not. <laughs> he was, let, me, let, me, let me give you some facts here. He was staying at the Malmaison, quite a sort of posh Where? hotel in Edinburgh. The problem with hotels like Malmaison hotels that think they're yeah. cool, because they'll try and have got him a tra trampoline, rather than going, what are you talking about? <laughs> This is a hotel. Do you want to order something on room service? Do you want an ironing board? Do you want any of the normal things? Of course you may not have a trampoline. <laughs> we might have been playing that game where you ring room service and just make up something really stupid yeah. to see whether they'll... Have you not? No, yeah, it's, not it's really good fun. Well, I like to stand up and say, I'd like some nuclear material, please. <laughs> I think it's absolutely the truth. You I think don't. it's true. I do. Yeah. I think it's true, and I think it's true. Right. Right. Oh, yeah. How can that oh, be I the truth? Because he's clearly off his box. <laughs> Both think that is true. What do you think? My team think it is true. So I think it's true. All right, okay. <laughs> I can tell you that, in fact, <laughs> it's true. Yes! Results! Yes. 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 Yes.
Liam Gallagher did once order a trampoline from hotel room service, claiming, I like to bounce. Other things Liam has done in a hotel room include uh, trashing a telly, smashing some doors and breaking a window. He really is very poor at trampolining. <laughs> Which means, at the end of that round, David has three points, and Lee also Yay. has three points. <laughs> Our next round is called This Is My, where we bring on a mystery guest who has a close connection to one of our panellists. Who knows who they might be tonight? The cook from David's country house? <laughs> or perhaps Lee's parole officer? Tonight... <laughs> Each of David's team will claim the connection, and it's up to Lee's lot to work out who's telling the truth. So, please welcome this week's special guest, Liz. <laughs> welcome, Liz. So, uh, to start with you, Joe. Uh, what is Liz to you? Well, this is Liz, and uh, when she was a baby, I accidentally dropped her in a pond. <laughs> Um, there, there, there will be time, there will be time. Larry, would you tell us what Liz is to you? This is Liz, who taught me basic bar skills before I went to work in the Queen Vic. Mm, OK, and uh, David, what is Liz's connection with you? Uh, this is Liz, and together we are writing a guide to the castles of Britain. <laughs> Please, team, where do you want to start? I think we've got to start with Joe. What are you talking about? <laughs> when, I was, when I was about seven... Seven? Seven or eight, yeah. Me and my two brothers were nah. looking after Liz, and we, she was a baby. She was about, I don't know, well, how old is a baby? Like, well, that's a nice baby. You decide, nine. Joe, it's your story. <laughs> <laughs> Who is the oldest looking after the baby? Yeah, that's right. Uh, my, my brother. He was how old? Um, he's a year and a half older than me. So he was he... nine and a half? Yeah. And his role was the chief leader of looking after the baby? Yes. Yeah. yeah. And what yeah. a great job you all did, by ourselves. <laughs> Apart from the dropping it in the pond bit. <laughs> Why were you near a pond? Because oh. I lived in the country and, ooh, there's ponds in the country, Carol. <laughs> Being rude to Carol Vorderman's not going to get you out of trouble, Jen. <laughs> How did the, the actual dropping happen in the pond? We were, we were playing catch with her. Oh, <laughs> come on, Pete. You were playing catch? We were just kind of just trying to make, make her laugh, just throwing her to... Right. I think we should move on to castles. I absolutely think we should move on to castles. Yeah. <laughs> with, with the first question, what's your favourite and why, Dave? I have two favourite castles, and they're because castles I discovered as a child. Right. And they, not on my own, they've been yeah. previously discovered by... <laughs> <laughs> There's a castle in Wales, uh, yes. in the, uh, the Mumbles, in, uh, near Swansea, mm. uh, and uh, that's called Oystermouth Castle. It's called what? Oystermouth I, Castle. I can vouch for that. So. Yeah, but hang on, at least I can but vouch for that. what kind of castle is that? Castle. That's a sort of Norman... I think a sort of late Norman kind of castle with, a, with a keep you're, you're and, right. a, and a... Sort of what do you like about Oyster Castle? In Oyster Mouth. <laughs> I like it because it's, it's quite a sort of traditional old-fashioned castle with a, with a moat and... and An old-fashioned castle? They all no, tend to be traditional. Why is that? As opposed what? to these new modern well, yes, well, uh, ones with well, stone it is, it is, it's an. <laughs> has always been irritating to me <laughs> that very few castles completely adhere to, my, to what I imagine being the typical castle. What was yours again, Larry? I've Larry, yeah, what was yours again? Exactly. This is the lady who taught me my basic bar skills for when I was working in EastEnders. And what are the three most the important bar skills that you now have? My character yeah. is supposed to have spent years working in the bar and pub business. Yeah. So, you know, it's timing. It's not just a case of, you know, Pull a pint. You've got to pull a pint and be talking to a customer, taking money. What sort of lines so, might that, you say, Larry? You might say, how are you doing, sunshine? Or, uh, <laughs> like... Did you go to her or did she come to you? No, no. You go to her. They've and been doing this for about... They've been doing you, like, this has been years of... They've you know. been doing this for evidently eight years. I've only been there for a year and a half and it's just an induction thing. So, so automatically, did, uh, what happens? Did Barbara Windsor go? Barbara Windsor, went, Barbara Windsor had to go after because she's been there for sort of nearly 20 years. So for 20 years, yeah. then they said, OK, 
Yeah. It's been OK so far, but yeah. we've decided... Yeah. Suddenly... Everybody, every... The first 14 years was great, but now it's about time you had a bit of bar training, cos... Yeah. We, we can't keep putting up with you missing that pint pot anymore. <laughs> Pouring it over your head and then your bra falls off. <laughs> We need an answer. So, Lee's team. Oh, is Liz... Right. Is Liz Joe's pond playmate, David's fellow castle expert, or Larry's bar tutor? What do you think, Russell? I think castle. Why do you think castle? Because Dave's an intelligent man and will have lots of little hobbies and stuff. <laughs> this is definitely Larry. It's definitely... It's okay. not Joe. That's completely inconceivable. You, you would not give a very small baby to three very young children, who not went, even in the Who 60s. went in the water to get the baby out? My, my brother Bill. No. Well, because he had the right Lee, beak Lee. shape. <laughs> Lee. <laughs> I'm going to push you for an answer, Lee. We are, Larry, we are. say Larry. I'll say that. You're saying, it's, you're saying it's Larry. I don't think any of them are. Okay. True. Liz, would you like to reveal your true identity? I know Jo. She dropped me in a pond and I was like... <laughs> yes. We've actually got a photo of the two of you together. Oh. Oh. Congratulations. I don't know why I'm congratulating you for being thrown into a pond. And thank you so much for coming. Liz. Yes. It's actually true. Uh, Liz was dropped in a pond as a baby, and it was Joe who accidentally dropped her. And then oh. accidentally skipped away laughing. <laughs> She also accidentally strapped her to a breeze block and tied her up in a sack full of kittens. But <laughs> that's Joe, ever so clumsy. <laughs> Which brings us to our final round, Quickfire Live. A Lee's team are currently behind, so they need to do better here. And we start with... <laughs> David. Possession. Ah, well, you have to reach under your desk and lift out your box. <laughs> OK. Yeah. This is a letter rejecting me from a job at McDonald's. <laughs> please. What do you reckon? Could you read it out to us, please, David? <clears throat> Reference CM1156-P. <laughs> Dear David, thank you for your recent application to work at the Abingdon branch. Unfortunately, at this time, your application has not been successful. Thank you for your interest in our company. Yours sincerely, um, Martin Danks. And when was it dated, please? It's dated the 19th of July, 1990. And you will have been... I will have been... Mortified. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I never really bounced back from that. <laughs> um, I, I would have been just 16. Does that add up, Carol? He's, he's 52. At <laughs> <laughs> heart, yes. <What? laughs> I don't want to bring back unhappy memories for you, but what did you feel you could have brought to the company? <laughs> a certain nervous energy. <laughs> uh, a, a culinary snobbishness that is lacking. <laughs> lacking. Uh, a, a fear of interacting with customers. <laughs> and an equal fear of frying chips. <laughs> I think, though, I think Dave could have closed them down just by having people come and go, give us a burger. You don't want a burger, my friend. <laughs> no, I would uh, not at that age have had the confidence to refer to someone as my friend <laughs> in that way. Why? Don't look at my face. <laughs> what do you think, Carol? I You're don't think, it, no, I think it's a lie, but I don't want to sway you on this because we need the points. Or at least kept it. He's a peculiar mystery. Look at him. Yeah. <laughs> This is why I do, don't like people looking at my face. <laughs> <laughs> so, Lee, you're saying... I have to say that I think that's probably... True, it's true, it's true, it's true. It's a lie. I say it's a lie. You're saying it's a lie. OK, David, time to own up. It is, in fact, a lie. Oh. <laughs> it's a lie. This David has never even been to McDonald's, although he was. I've, of course I've been to McDonald's. <laughs> He went to visit Lee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Can I please be allowed to read the auto cue Sorry. joke? Okay. <laughs> David has never even been, although he was once mildly tempted to pop in and sample their short-lived McPhezant zinger. <laughs> Computer. <laughs> Next, Lee. I once picked up a hitchhiker and scared him so much he cried. <laughs> David, do you believe him? Uh, where were you driving? I was going from, uh, I think it was from round Nor Norwich area, somewhere there. Round Norwich, too. I presume somewhere in between Norwich uh, and Yarmouth. How Yarmouth. did you scare him? Um, well, what happened was we were driving along. He got in the car and he said, uh, first he was said, driving along and he got in the car. Well, that's already yeah. dangerous. <laughs> well, he was sort of running to keep up. Yeah. It was an ice cream van. I sort of grabbed him by the hair yeah. and pulled him in. Yeah. That's how I used to get them. And um, <laughs> my car used to have problems because it was a problem car. And uh, <laughs> I, pulled, I pulled over, right? I pulled over and I went round the back because I used to have to hit the engine to get it going again. And we, it all went wrong and we pulled over. So I said, I'm just getting in the back because I need to get a hammer to <laughs> give it a whack. And as I went back, I said, don't, I thought it'd be funny to say, don't worry, uh, I'm not going to kill you. <laughs> so I went round the back of the van and got a hammer out, went back to the front. And as I was walking past to the front of the car with the engine lifts, I looked in like that. And I just saw him go like that. And he just wiped a small tear from his eye because I think he genuinely thought, I'm going to kill him. And he was a bit worried. He, maybe he cried. That's a very odd response to immediate mortal danger. <laughs> to, to just slightly well up. That's more of a, that's what I call that a more end of the It's a Wonderful Life reaction. <laughs> Look here, I, I am to die, it appears. Rather than, oh, get out of the car, run! But just notice the slight, a slight welling up. Ah, well, all things come to an end. <laughs> David, what do you reckon, then? I think the stuff about like, having a dodgy car that he has to hit in a certain way with a hammer to get it going, I think that side of it... Well, let's just leave it at that, then. That's the bit of it that doesn't ring true to uh, me. Uh, flannel. Larry, what, what do you say? I mean, you've got a good flannel detector. Would you... Would you yeah, uh, I, I think... I think, yeah. I think it is. I think it's flannel. I think... Well, I, I actually... Oh, I think dear. it might it's be slightly true, true but oh, I'm going to go... I don't... I'm not <laughs> convinced it's true, so I'm going to go with the team and we'll say it's a lie. Not going to rock the boat. No. OK. Uh, Lee Mack. I say that it is indeed the truth. Oh, it's true. Uh, Lee did once pick up a hitchhiker and scared him so much that he cried. Even Lee now admits it probably wasn't a good idea to shut him in the boot with the other hitchhikers. <laughs> oh, and that is the noise <laughs> that signals the end of the round and the end of the show. And I can reveal... It's a draw with uh, five points on Lee's team and five points for David's team. <laughs> but it's not just a team game. Uh, my individual liar of the week is Joe Brand. <laughs> I have to say, I had my suspicions about Joe the second I saw her park in the disabled bay and limp into the studio. <laughs> human cost of our convenience food in the rice fields of Thailand. Blood, sweat and takeaways next on BBC One.